as we have seen the time distance and speed okay we'll see the concept of problems on trains that is also one more important topic problems on trains okay now generally in problems of train try to understand most important topic or points very important suppose understand this is a train okay this is a train okay suppose it is passing the train is passing say standing man okay or say signal pole okay or say a tree you can consider okay whenever a train passes a standing man or a signal pole or a tree which are parallel to or beside the what track okay that time only will consider the length of the train because these don't have any length that is no length no length no length okay because they don't have a length generally because it will be considered as zero okay so generally length of train is considered x meter x meters what x meters okay so that's what we need to understand the total length if it is not a standing man or a signal pole or a tree okay so generally first uh length of train is say l meters and length of length of say length of say what um, bridge platform platform or tunnel okay except what except these that is a standing man or a signal pole or a train okay as b meters this is what l meters and this is b meters then the total length or you can call it as d as a distance will be what l plus b meters l plus b meters except these three these are entertaining because platform is having a length bridge is having a length tunnel is having a length okay but we don't have a length of what a man or a pole or a tree keep it in mind that similarly now we come across say two trains suppose two trains are moving in the same direction say one train is moving also another train is moving both are moving in the same direction suppose the train of this is set t1 train 1 train 2 so consider the train 1 say speed is x kilometers per hour and this is y kilometers per hour okay that time if both are moving in the same direction then we come across relative speed that is relative speed so the relative speed will be what x minus y if they are moving in the same direction and if they are moving towards each other like this way they are coming on a parallel line but that is by default will be a parallel line okay coming towards each other that time the relative speed will become x plus y keep it in mind the same i'll write it here okay i'll mention not 
two trains i'll mention it as two bodies because one body can be a train another can be a person who is running okay he is not now stationary here standing man is a stationary but when a man is running then he is not stationary that time it can be considered as another body okay so two trains or i'll write two bodies having x kilometers per hour and y kilometers per hour having instead of running you call it as running with running with x kilometers per hour and y kilometers per hour then at y kilometers per hour in the same direction in the what same direction the relative speed is equals to that is what we call as relative speed as rs is equals to x minus y but condition is that if x is greater than y otherwise you have to do y minus x clear it similarly two trains generally train will only come or a person may be there that's why two bodies i mentioned two trains are running in opposite direction opposite direction say the it is also called as towards each other towards each other okay then the relative speed will be what x plus y no doubt that if x is greater than y or y is greater than x but we are adding here here we are subtracting then speed cannot be negative okay the speed never becomes negative so that is the reason x should be greater than y there here no such condition always the relative speed will be what x plus y okay so both the speeds are added it's kind of very simple kind of rubber band when you stretch it it require more what force when you leave it automatically the force increases okay that is what we can call it as when they are coming towards each other the speed will be on this and it that is what relative speed will be one x plus y and rest all distance speed and time properties are remain same and average speed is also remain same but here we don't call it as a average speed we call it as a relative speed because of two bodies are related and but keep it in mind if the person that time this b becomes zero if it is a signal pole it will become zero if it is a tree that time also it will become zero so these are the key points you need to remember when they are coming in the same direction or going in the same direction or when they are coming towards each other that is opposite direction these are the formulas which are required to solve the problems on trains similarly like problems on trains the one more ca concept will be on boats and streams okay same case with boats and streams generally two things will be there one is downstream another is called upstream okay when you know uh, you are rowing a boat and suppose the water is also flowing in the same direction that automatically it is called downstream and suppose you are rowing a boat and water is flowing in the opposite direction automatically it is called upstream okay so let's consider speed of speed of a man or a boat is man in the sense man is swimming you can consider is 
x kilometers per hour. Similarly, speed of what stream, or we also call it as current. Okay, that is water flowing. Okay, stream or current is by kilometers per hour. Then downstream will be generally what both kind of relative speed x plus y will become upstream it will be what x minus y again condition is x should be greater than y definitely the speed of the stream will be less than speed of the boat so speed of the boat will be more than the what the speed of the what stream okay. then we can calculate based on this so that is um, we can calculate the speed with respect to what the uh, 1 by 2 into bracket x plus y if it, it is downstream and if it is upstream we can make it 1 by 2 into bracket x minus y finding the what the rate rate of downstream and rate of what upstream we can find it with respect to x plus y into 1 by 2 x minus y into what 1 by 2 so these are the basic formulas which are required for what ports and strips and to the topic of area related very important that is part of mensuration we can call it as we don't have concept related to any surface area volume surface area and volume. We don't have any topics related to surface area volume, general area related to object. Uh, area. Suppose if you take a rectangle, we know that rectangle generally area of rectangle is length into breadth. Suppose if you take its perimeter, that is perimeter is also called as circumference. Circumference is 2 into bracket L plus P, length plus breadth. Similarly, if you come across a square, square. So in square area will be what? A into A, that is side square, because in square all the sides are equal. Similarly, if you come to the perimeter, perimeter of a square, it will be what 4A, adding up this all four sides. If suppose this is A, 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 it will be what 4A. Next, suppose diagonal so diagonal of square is always equal to two to a this diagonal is always equal to what root two a okay because of we apply here what Pythagoras theorem and we get the what this diagonal Similarly, if we take triangle, triangle, okay. So area of triangle is what generally we know that half into base into height. Whenever a triangle, we know its height. That is also called altitude, okay. And if we know its base, this is what your height, okay and its perimeter is equal to a plus b plus c suppose this is a side b side and c side and suppose if you want to go for say particularly area of equilateral triangle in equilateral triangle all sides are equal all sides are 
equal the time formula will be root 3 by 4 into sine square okay. then one more suppose we know the triangle we know like say this is 3 centimeter and this is 4 or 5 centimeter and this is 4 centimeter that time we can calculate the area based on the what then sides are given so now suppose the sides are given 3 5 4 means area of triangle when sides are given so first we need to find semi perimeter that is s equals to a plus b plus c upon 2 so when we get a semi perimeter then we can find the area the area because when the sides are given so area will be root of s into s minus a s minus b s minus c so this is what when area you want to find out when the sides are given provided first if you find the semi perimeter then only you can get it this concept is called as heroin's formula okay suppose if we want to find the say circle related circle suppose we know that in the circle radius and this is called its perimeter or a circumference now area of the circle area of the circle is what pi r square sometimes the pi value will be mentioned that is 3.14 or generally pi value will be what 22 by 7 or 3.14 <coughs> then the circumference or perimeter will be 2 pi r will be how much? 2 pi r okay. that is all related to circle suppose if we take say trapezium So in trapezium, we can find out this is a trapezium. Okay. This A and B are always parallel, and this will be the height. Okay. But these two sides are not parallel. The time area will be half into sum of parallel sides into height will give you what area of trapezium similarly rhombus if we take rhombus so rhombus generally a square only but diagonals are not equal okay what happens in square sides are equal diagonals are also equal but here sides are equal but the diagonals are not equal so this is the diagonal a b c d AD, AC, AC diagonal is not equal to this BD diagonal. That time it will be termed as a rhombus. So even in rhombus, how to calculate area? Area equals to half into that is product of. So I'll call this diagonal as P1 or a D1 diagonal one, and this is our diagonal two. One half into what? Product of diagonals d1 into d2 will give you what area of rhombus.